My guest today is Ricardo Miranda. He's the CEO of mthfrdoctors.com, and he's a clinician and one of the top researchers in the field of MTHFR genetic mutation. With over 28 years of clinical experience, he is able to assess the direct link between MTHFR genetic mutations and health issues. Uh, He developed a unique approach combining functional medicine, genetics, epigenetics, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, nutrition, and integrative medicine diagnostics. Super cool. He has done extensive research in the MTHFR area and with the understanding of multiple disciplines, he has coached doctors from all over the country on how to treat patients with MTHFR mutations and methylation issues. He believes that educating and empowering people to take control of their own health is one of the most important gifts he can give to his patients. Um, Quote from him, the more knowledge people have, the better are the decisions they make about their own health. So we are getting all into MTHFR gene mutations today because this is something that if you do not know about yourself, you have to, you have to. This is, many of you may know I I do genetic analysis in my coaching with people to see how it might impact certain health issues in their lives. And MTHFR is a slam dunk, as he'll tell you, about 80% of the population has mutations on this gene. And we're going to tell you what that means. That means you could be eating all the right things. You are not converting folate (laughs) essentially into the active form that your body needs. And a lot goes wrong. We're talking about pregnancy and how that impacts unborn children all the way to high performers and everything feels hard all the time. This is such a simple, simple thing that you can find out about your tech, your um, health do a test and easily and affordably modulate and make sure that you have what you need in terms of folate. And he's going to talk about why folate matters so much. You can be living a completely different life. I'm telling you, this one's so big. So I was excited to have him on because I'm like, yeah, uh, if you don't know about MTHFR and you don't know your MTHFR uh, gene status, I guess we'd say, if you have mutations or not, which you probably do, Let me be the intro to you because this is something that has heavily impacted my life and made a huge difference in my own quality of life. So um, yeah, let's get all into it. Talking MTHFR today, let's dive in. This is Ricardo Miranda. So Ricardo, I was excited to talk to you about the MTHFR gene because I have found in my work, working with people, most people don't know, they maybe heard of it. They have the hee hee ha ha, like, oh, that's the mother effer gene. You know, they've like vaguely heard about it on podcasts. Maybe they haven't heard of it at all. And there are certain people who, when they have the less optimal mutations on MTHFR genes and they start supporting that through supplementation, I've seen firsthand a few times, it is life changing reality changing for them. So let's back it up because you are the expert on MTHFR and I'm so excited to hear more of what you have to say. Why is this gene so important for people to know about? Yes, Dara, and thanks for having me. And, um, you know, over 80% of our population, they have at least one mutation on this gene. So why is this important? Because this gene controls how the body detoxifies. That's one of the one of the big things. Also, the gene controls the gene controls methylation. We, methylation is the process that governs detoxification, governs gene expression, turns genes on and off. Uh, there's an effect on the immune system, on DNA, RNA formation. So the this gene is, uh, is uh, has a relation to many health conditions, but one of the most common uh, um, um, actions on this gene is it controls intracellular detoxification. So how our body detoxify? We live in a toxic world. Mm-hmm. So we need to have our detoxification system working 100% all the time because, you know, the world we live in, especially today, you know, compared to 100 years ago, uh, it's much more toxic. Um, so every time you eat food that is not organic, for example, and there are mm-hmm. pesticides, or our body needs to detoxify. If you have mutations in this gene, your detoxification ability may not be optimal. And depending on how, you know, the rest of your health is combined, mm-hmm. uh, there's a compound effect. Mm-hmm. And some people are 
more affected than others by this gene, but uh, if you have a mutation, yes, that could uh, could be uh, could have a, a, a huge impact on our health, and mm -hmm. that's why I say when they start taking the right supplementation for the mutation, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So let's um back up to you know folate, folic acid, right? Because this gene obviously yeah. deals with a lot of things like methylation. If you're not familiar, is like okay, it's science word, but if you're familiar, you're like. No, like if your methylation cycle can't work in your body, your body correctly, because it's missing some of the things that it needs to be able to, your body just can't work correctly on so many levels. Yes. And so when we have these little missing parts in this chain reaction, that's happening constantly in our bodies. Now, all of a sudden that chain reaction is messed up. So let's talk about folate. Uh, folic acid eating, you know, maybe somebody they're like, I eat really healthy. I eat leafy greens. I eat all sorts of things with all the nutrients in them. Why would they want to know if they have a mutation on MTHFR? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and by the way, for your listeners, they are not very familiar. MTHFR stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. It's a gene that breaks down folate and breaks down folic acid. Mm -hmm. it, it metabolizes. And what is the difference? What is folate and folic acid? Well, folate is the nutrient that we need. It comes from, you know, food, leafy greens, have, they're, they're very high on folate, spinach, broccoli. Folic acid is the synthetic version of it. Okay. So uh, it's very common, for example, every pregnant woman takes folic acid. Mm -hmm. um, but what they really need to take is folate because what they have discovered years ago is that uh, if they're deficient, if they don't have enough folate, it can give uh, rise to birth defects on babies. Mm -hmm. So that's why they start prescribing supplements with folate or folic. And then they develop the cheap form, the synthetic form, folic acid, which is a stable form as well. And then they start supplement, supplementing uh, prenatal vitamins, for example, with folic acid. Mm -hmm. But uh, what the patient has is a deficiency in folate is not a deficiency in folic acid. Mm -hmm. But what happens is back then in the 90s, when they discovered the deficiency in folate would cause birth defect, uh, they were not paying attention about the gene that Metabolite controls the metabolization, the breakdown of mm -hmm. folate and folic acid, which is the MTHFR gene. Mm -hmm. And a very high percentage of the population has a mutation on this gene. And if you do have a mutation on this gene, the reason why you should not take folic acid is because if you, let's say if you have a mutation that, well, let's say the worst mutation, you got a double mutation, on the main allele of the gene, which is called, the, the correct terminology is a homozygous mutation on the MTHFR C677T, for example. So that patient will lose 70% of their ability to break down the folate or the folic acid. So the patient take, let's look at the pregnant uh, uh, lady, for example. So she's taking the, the folic acid. Well, the body is only breaking, only able to absorb 30%. So she's not getting the entire amount that she needs. But what happens to the 70% that she cannot break down? That becomes unmetabolized folic acid. That becomes toxicity for the body. Now she needs to detoxify that. And that will directly affect the brain development of the baby. And wow. that's the direct collection, uh, connection to autism, for example. Are you saying that even today, still um, prenatal vitamins are including folic acid instead of Most methylfolate? Of them. Wow. Most of them still, yes. Uh, I see a lot more now available. Uh, patients are able to find the methylated form of folate, uh, much more available in health food stores right. and they can look for it but I still see a lot of patients with prenatal vitamins. And when you look at the ingredients, wow. it says 
either it says straight folic acid or it says folate as of folic acid. Wow. wow. Yes, a lot. So they, they're still doing that. Oh, man. Uh, so that's why I'm out, you know, yeah. talking and, and bringing the, the, uh, this uh, uh, to uh, bringing the attention to everyone to pay attention. And it's so important. Now, if you don't have any mutation on this gene, mm -hmm. then it's okay. You can metabolize everything. Your enzyme is functioning at 100%. But as I said, over 80% of your population, they have at least one mutation. There are several different types of mutation. Yeah. The person may lose from 20% on their ability to break down the folate or folic acid up to 70%. So there are different types. And then depending on your mutation, you will require more or less of the methylated folate that you would need to take to bypass the mutation to support that methylation process so your body can function well, your body can break down the folate mm -hmm. that you're taking. Um, yeah, can you clarify like, that? Like for somebody who this might be like really new to, what, yeah. what you're saying would be optimal to take instead of folic acid if you have a mutation yeah, on so, one of your MTHFR genes? Yeah, so you would have to take a methylated form of folate. Now, if they look at the bottle and says, folate as natural sources. That is okay because it comes from food. Mm -hmm. So that is safe. Not ideal because mm -hmm. your body is still not going to be able to break down everything. Mm -hmm. so let's say you have the, the worst mutation, okay, the double mutation. So you lose roughly 70% of your ability to break down that folate or folic acid. If you take, so number one, avoid folic acid, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, if you now let's look at what forms of folate. If it's folate as natural sources, it's safe, but you're still only going to absorb about 30%. So it's not ideal. Right. So what are the forms? They're the best form. They are the methylated forms of folate, which could be either the 5L methyl folate or methylene tetrahydrofolate. A lot of times just says methylfolate. It's mm -hmm. either the 5L or the 6S. Those are the best forms. Now, also, there's another form that's called the folinic acid. That is okay, too, because it's a different, uh, uh, it's already broken down differently and your body can absorb. So, but to be on the same side, the best forms is the 5L or the 6S. And when it says methylfolate, that's what you want. Nice. Thanks. And let's be clear. This is not just applied to pregnant women. You know, I, one of my oh, most wait. profound moments with a client was, um, cause I do some DNA analysis on, on clients. Right. And I saw that he had double mutation on MTHFR and he had really low energy. He was very high performer, but he was just grinding, just pushing himself to the limits. And I, I explained to him, I'm like, Hey, he said, let's get you on some methylfolate. And we had him on some B12 stuff. Cause he had some stuff there. Methylated B12. I will never forget a few days later, I'm walking into the gym. It's super early in the morning. And I lived in Utah at the time and he was in California. So it was way early for him. And he calls me, you know, he didn't call me that off, like just randomly like that. And I'm like, hello. And he, he just goes, I haven't felt like this since I was a little boy. <laughs> That's amazing. I love and it. Yeah. I, I love like, those stories. Wow. Just, I'm sure you do. It's just like, because yes. he wasn't able, he was eating healthy, but he, he had this mutation where he's just not converting it into a form that his body can use. And now you're enlightening us also. Now he also has this, this rest of it that he has to detoxify yes. when he is already having a hard time detoxifying because he doesn't have the active form of folate that he it's needs. It's a compound effect. The mm -hmm. body not functioning well, plus he's retaining more toxicity. Right. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So sometimes, could you talk about, I mean, we're going to get into some different things, but I always wonder when I he hear people say they have chronic fatigue, my mind always goes to these, the, to, to MTHFR. I'm like, I wonder if somebody checked their MTHFR, you know, can you talk about some, I mean, I, it's kind of endless, the list of health implications of having, yeah. not having folate, <laughs> but can you talk about some of the big hitters? Yes, absolutely. Um, some of the most common symptoms are fatigue. You mm -hmm. mentioned about, the, you know, chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. fatigue mm -hmm. brain, brain fog. Right. So they're just 
you know, they're not functioning well. They, totally. They're in that state that they're, and they don't know, they can't pinpoint. So right. those are the two main symptoms uh -huh. of, as you mentioned, obviously, methylation affects every part of our body. So they right. can have an array of, right. of, of different symptoms and health conditions uh, pertaining to this. But some of the most common is fatigue and brain fog. Mm. Okay. So now no, anxiety and mental health. That's another, you know, another big one. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, anxiety is another one. Mm. Very big, very, you know, um, and some and somewhat depression as well. So mental health in general. Mm. Wow. Very that much connected. Yes. I'm bringing it back to a little bit now. I'm taking you all over. Thanks for coming with me. <laughs> taking mm -hmm. it back to pregnancy and the developing brain, right? Yeah. So um, there's a link. You're saying there's a link between autism and the MTHFR gene when when it's not uh, managed. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. It's because when you have the mutation and you're taking folic acid, that's the problem. And that's the link. So back in the 1987, if you go to the Centers for Disease Control website, the occurrence rate for autism 1987 was one in 10,000 babies. Okay. For to now, occurrence rate of autism is one in 44. Okay. It's huge. And what we have seen is from the early 90s, where they started prescribing uh, vitamins with folic acid to prevent birth defect, we have seen at the same time starting a rise in occurrence rate for autism. And that's directly related to this mutation because as they're taking folic acid, and it does prevent the birth defect, it, it, it does the job that they wanted to do which is mm -hmm. prevent birth defect. It does do that. But for people that have the mutation, mm. um, so they are not uh, uh, breaking down that folic acid well. So the unmetabolized folic acid becomes toxicity. The toxicity, now that the body needs to get rid of, well, the toxicity goes to the baby as well. Mm -hmm. And that affects brain development, which is uh, the cause of autism, is the... Uh, uh, the brain develop, it has to do with the brain development, the baby in the womb. Mm. So you have one more factor now compounds to how the person's health overall uh, is, and then it, it, the effect and the cause of autism, um, it, it's not like a, a, a hundred percent. Right. Like, as with any health condition, it has right. to do with how everything else in your health is. Right. This is just one very important factor right. that has been linked to. Mm, something to consider for sure. Absolutely. Um, in terms of testing, a lot of people will go to their doctor and they get blood tests, right? And mm -hmm. you can get a blood test for folate. Can you talk about that and how that might not be the most optimal path? Yes, so uh, you can you can test for MTHFR through blood test. You can ask your doctor sometimes, uh, or your folate levels is what more what I'm referring to. Oh, I see. Okay, so what are the tests that are important for you to ask uh, mm -hmm. your yeah. doctor if you have MTHFR? Um, I always like to see folate levels, mm -hmm. B12 levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, homocysteine as well, which is an amino acid that can, that can be inflammatory, especially for the heart, directly related to imitation of mutation as well. But uh, sometimes uh, the doctors that they know a little on MTHFR, they use homocysteine as the main marker for okay. methylation. Okay. And, but I have to point out that it's a good marker, but it's, it should not be the main marker for methylation. Okay. The main marker should be folate. But we, we always look at the homocysteine as well. Mm. Uh, if your homocysteine is too high, that means the body is not breaking down the homocysteine to the right level. The methylation is not working well. What happens with the MTH fermentation is you see folate converts 
homocysteine into methionine. But when the when you're not breaking down that folate, you're not absorbing folate because of the mutation. So you don't have enough folate. So you're not breaking down that homocysteine. Mm -hmm. And then the homocysteine becomes high in the blood work. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I say that's not the main area, the main um, marker is because there are other genes that also affect homocysteine. Right. And for example, the CBS gene, the cisatine beta synthase gene, that if you have a mutation, it will actually lower the homocysteine, but the patient may have a false no, a negative or a normal the homocysteine um, and it's still not methylating well. So the best way is you look for folate levels. Then you ask your doctor to test for folate levels. And then you check your serum folate. And But when they measure folate, they're measuring all types of folate, including a metabolized folic acid. So mm -hmm. you need to look at your folate levels and then you need to factor in your mutation. Okay. So let's say your folate levels is at number is 10, but you lose 70% of your ability to break down your folate. Okay. So you could be as low as three because so whatever you see on the blood work is not what your body is utilizing. Okay. So there is a metal, there is a methylated folate in there as well. So it's not totally a three, it'll probably be like a four. So you have to hmm. factor in, look at folate, look at your mutation, and then you do the best estimation of what your methylation is. Uh, you also look at the homocysteine as well. So mm -hmm. you have to look at all these markers. Mm -hmm. uh, B12 is another one as well. Right. So basically what you're saying is, you know, you could show that you have like really great folate levels in your blood work. But if you don't know, if you have this gene mutation, not all of that folate, it's not showing you how much you're actively converting into the usable form. Some of it can be exactly. like raw unused folate and you, you go get this blood work done and you're like, yeah, I'm good on folate. It's never come up weird. But if you don't know, if you have the gene mutation, you don't know exactly. how much you're actually utilizing. Yeah. So if your folate is good and you have no mutation, you're good. But if mm -hmm. your folate is good and you have a mutation, maybe you're not being able to break down that folate. So right. your body's not using it. And then right. you're not good. I and think about why. this with all the B vitamins, right? Like, you know, B6, for example, I've noticed is a really common mutation on that too. And it's like, well, we don't know how much of that B6 is being converted into P5P and being used in the body. We don't know. And exactly. that's why genetic testing and diving a little deeper on this is a little helpful because you Very on helpful. blood, you could be like, I'm good, but you don't know how much you're actually using of any of that, exactly. you know? So exactly. Okay. Let's talk about the two big hitter genes, just in case somebody, you know, cause there's, you guys have a test, right? You guys do a, uh, swab. Cheek swab. Right? Yes. Yeah. Very convenient. Yeah. They don't need doctor prescription. They do it at home. They swab. Yes. Uh huh. And then I'm assuming, obviously you guys give them information. This is what this means for you. Right. So absolutely. Guys... Yeah. So, uh, they can order from home, order the test kits. Uh, we can send, I mean, all over the U S and, and to different, we have sent to 20 different countries. Uh, so they receive very easy. They do the cheek swab. Once we get the results, we give them, and then we give, uh, the explanation of what that means. And we give some recommendations based on the mutation. Obviously, is nice. not recommendation on their health because we don't know. But at right. least on them, on the, mm -hmm. we give them some guidance. Okay, based on the mutation, this is this is what you need, and we give the explanation. So it's uh, right. on the results itself. But they will need somebody like you yourself to go over everything else with them. <laughs> everything else that is going on with their health. Right. But it's super you know? helpful to just be able to find this out. And I can't encourage oh, it enough. I mean, it, it it is so vital. I don't even, I don't know if I can even express enough how important it is. Like you could be living this life where you feel like you have chronic fatigue, brain fog, like your whole quality of life can be seriously diminished. And you take care of this one thing because your body just isn't converting the folate in your food into the active form. You're eating leafy greens, you're eating spinach. It's not doing a good job of that. And you take a very affordable supplement like methylfolate, the, the methylated B vitamins are extremely affordable. You can find you're, it anywhere. Yeah. Any yeah, yeah. Your whole life reality can be different 
from fine. And, and, and if you're going to have babies, the, the whole life quality of your kid could be different from finding out this one simple thing. And that's Absolutely. why I wanted to have you on the show. Cause this is so important. And we, this is one of the most researched, these, these two genes we're talking about are two of the most researched genes out there on health. It's well-established. It's a simple and affordable fix. It's a simple and affordable test. Like find out how your body's doing on that. For me, um, I have only, uh, one, I don't have the homozygous mutation, but on one of them, I the have, heterozygous mutation. right. Um, but I still, I have some stuff on B12 and some of my other B vitamins too. And a B complex, like a methylated B complex for me is life-changing. Absolutely. Yes. That's another thing that they look at most B12s. They have this cyanocobalamin, which is the cheapest mm -hmm. kind, but the methylated one is the methylcobalamin, mm -hmm. which is the, is the best kind. And most people can tolerate that. Uh, mm -hmm. once in, in a blue moon, you know, somebody gets a little, a, a fidgeted, a little anxiety with that. And then you just change from methylcobalamin to, for example, hydroxycobalamin, mm -hmm. and then they're fine. Mm -hmm. But over 90% of the time, the methylated cobalamin, everyone, you know, does really well with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting timing because we've had this schedule, this show for a while, and I just had run out of my B vitamins. I mean, I usually I take them. My that's there's very few supplements I take with me, even when I travel. And it's usually like my B complex and magnesium, you know, are like definitely for sure. And I for some reason the bottle ran out. I had some more in my other you know backup closet, mm -hmm. and I just forgot. I just it was so weird. I'm like, yeah. And so for like three weeks, maybe I wasn't taking my B complex. And then I was like, oh, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I forgot to take my B complex. And I pulled it out. And for like three days straight, I just sat there and was like, I feel like, I almost feel like I, I'm so tapped in and awake right now that I feel like I'm almost on something, you know, like I just felt <laughs> so much more clear and alert and present. And I was like, wow, I was really glad that that happened because it just helped me see how much they're impacting my quality of life. Absolutely. You know? It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> how, how, how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, one thing, once in a blue moon, somebody takes methylated folate and if they don't do well, they get, you know, agitated, they get anxiety, a good antidote. You stop right away and you take niacin. Okay. Niacin okay. is the antidote of methylfolate. Good but this is like 99% of the time people are fine. Right. Just in case if they okay. don't respond well, because once once in a while, somebody will not respond well. And mm -hmm. then they know, they just stop, take 100 milligrams of niacin or nice. will bring them down. Okay, right good away. to know. So no risk. You can just take some niacin and you'll be all good in case you're one of those blue moon people. Okay, yes. so let's talk about the two genes. Would you mind talking about the two genes and just clarifying a little more what we, what you mean when you say the homozygous SNPs or the heterozygous SNPs? Because probably for most people, they're like, what are you? These are not words I normally that? Yeah. use. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the MTHFR, the two main we call the two main alleles with the two genes which is the M, the most important the mthfr c677t and the mthfr a1298c okay mm -hmm. they're two different alleles and when you have one mutation on one of these genes it's called a heterozygous mutation when you have two mutations it's called a homozygous mutation mm -hmm. and if you have no mutation sometimes it, it's going to call wild type okay, okay. Okay. And then it's the wild type. What is that? That means you have no mutation. Mm -hmm. So it's the common type. Okay. So if you have one mutation on the 81298C, for example, you lose roughly 20% of your ability to break down fully. Okay. If you have one mutation on the C677T, you lose 40% mm -hmm. of your ability to break down fully. fully. And the same thing as if you have two mutations on the A1298C, you also lose 40%. Okay. Now, if you lose two, if you if you have two mutations on the C677T, you lose 70% wow. of your ability to break down. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one a type that you have one mutation of each. Mm. This is called also the compound heterozygous. It's very important as well. And the patient loses roughly 60%. Mm -hmm. So those two, the compound heterozygous and the double mutation on the C677T are the worst ones 
Mm. Uh, so the C six seven seven T is you said more important, right? Because you that that one, even if you just have one mutation, you're losing double forty percent. Yes, right, forty versus twenty on the other one. So yeah. that's the big hitter. Yeah. And I have yeah. one mutation on that one, so I appreciate the actual number yeah. breakdown there. Exactly. So when you look at your <laughs> serum folate on the blood work, for example, mm-hmm. and if it says stand you know that the worst case scenario could be as low as six. Right. Okay. If you look at the worst case scenario, that's what I like to look mm-hmm. at the worst case nice. scenario. And then you, you know, because mm-hmm. you don't want to be, on most labs, the serum folate level, they consider to be normal if you're over 5.4 or something like that. Um, I consider the optimal numbers to be above 10. Okay. It's the okay. same, it's like, uh, functional medicine, the way you right. look at, it, at at the numbers, they're supposed to be ideal, not right. the, not what the lab says. It's normal, okay. Right. So you need to be above ten, and no, you know, it, probably people don't get into overmethylation unless they are over like forty on the full eight. Mm. So if you're fifteen or twenty, you don't want to be ten, eleven. You don't be on the edge. Because folate fluctuates every day, right? And if you're right on the edge of normal or optimal, and then you, you know, some days you're going to be below. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you have a little bit more. You need to have a cushion. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if your blood work says you have 10, you know you're already low. If you have even 12, but if you... If you get your percentage minus 40%, you're below optimal. So you need to shoot to be at, you know, 18, maybe mm-hmm. on, on, on your full age. On, nice. On, yeah. So always factor in based on your mutation. Uh, should people be concerned about taking too much or supplementing when they don't need it? Uh, yes. There is something called overmethylation. Okay. So like with anything in life, there's always a balance, Mm -hmm. right? The difference between medicine and uh, poison is the dosage, right? So yes, definitely. So um, you need to take the right amount to get you from under methylation, not methylating well, to optal methylation. And then you have a a window there that mm-hmm. you're methylating from this to here. But if you start going to over methylation and you start not feeling well. Mm. Thank yeah. you. One of my most common questions on social media is what supplements do you take? And I'm constantly saying, I don't even want to tell you mm-hmm. because you might not need to take any of the things that I'm taking, or you may need to take, you know, maybe, maybe vitamin D supplementation with K2 could change your entire life. Yeah. Maybe you don't need methylated B vitamins. Like I desperately need. And so that's a common thing that Absolutely. I notice. Like, um, a lot of people don't want to pay for testing. So they're just guessing, they hear the benefits, right? Well, we're, we're saying, well, uh, methylfolate will give you mental clarity, cognitive performance, all of this, but you got to find out not only whether you really need it or not, you probably do, but (laughs) since it's such a common mutation, but you don't know. And on top of that, you don't know how much you need. You don't know where you lie on this scale unless you just take a test. So find out, you know, it's crazy to me that we will pay to check up on our cars and see how they're doing, but not our bodies that are going to take us through every moment of our entire life. And that is what you only need to do it once in your lifetime because your DNA is not going to change. Right. Right. So just do that one time and then you do it right. I know. I mean, you said, you know, you're right on. Uh, They might not need it. Right. Or they may, you know, the amount that they need is right. totally different than the, the amount that somebody else will need. Mm-hmm. You need to know what mutation you have. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I would say this is up there as by far one of the most important things you can know about your genetics because genetics is still a very emerging field, right? We're still in pretty much junior pre pre kindergarten on yeah. genetics, right? But this is one of the one things, one of the one genes that we, or two, (laughs) that we really have a lot of pretty sound understanding, a lot of research and a lot of people who have had life-changing experiences from understanding this. So that's why I love that you guys are really focused fully in on this, by the way, their website guys is MTHFR 
doctors.com. And that's where, is that where they can order the test? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Do, website. You, do you get, I'm assuming you guys also have methylated folate for them to purchase if they need it. Yeah, we have, right? yeah, they can go in there. They have, you know, they can search for vitamins. Yes. They can find methylated folate. Okay. Lots of good, good stuff. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That's why I, I really did want to single this one out because it is so important. And it's one of the ones that we actually have pretty sound understanding on in terms of genetics. There's other genes. If you do, you know, a genetic analysis where it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. We, I don't know if we can really say that yet. And we don't really understand how a lot of the genes impact each other still, but this one, I would say having doing some genetic analysis with my clients and really backing off and saying, just, this is for your consideration. There's a lot we don't know still just take a look, you know, and watch as the research comes out. But this is one of the ones where it's kind of a slam dunk if yes, they need, definitely, yeah. if it's just it's very straightforward yes. <laughs> yes. and you will notice a difference. And I'm one it's of those so people, important. one of those people. And I thought about that, you know, I've thought about it with my mom and family members. It's just like, man, I wonder how different their life could have been because you talk about mental health. And I, I was reading on your guys' site because my mom probably has schizophrenia. She never got diagnosed. She had some wounds around that, but she had stroke, you know, di type two diabetes. She felt like she had chronic fatigue. I think a doctor diagnosed her with that one time. And it was in, at that time in the, you know, early nineties or something it was just mm -hmm. like, I have this condition and that's it, you know? And now I look at all these things and I'm like, I wonder if she was just severely deficient mm -hmm. in folate her whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, not as the single thing, but I bet that was a contributor. That's a contributor. <laughs> exactly. That's a, definitely a possibility. And definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I was reading, um, on your site, you know, even considerations with ADHD, mm -hmm. anemia, asthma, um, all sorts of things, types of cancers, cognitive delay, developmental delays, depression, like, if you can't produce energy correctly in your body and you can't detoxify correctly, that's a really important issue to pay attention to. And so yeah. I appreciate you guys like really Actually, being in research, on this one. Research done that shows that exercise supports methylation. Nice, nice, nice. And so the, the importance of, you know, having an exercise routine in your life mm. that directly improves methylation. Nice. Okay. Yes. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. All right. We will go ahead and wrap it up guys. Um, the, the, we'll link the test, um, and the show notes in case you guys want to find out and their website in general, which has some really great information, lots of research, lots of sources on all these different types of conditions and their, um, links to MTHFR mutations is on their website. And again, it's MTHFRdoctors.com. Um, anything else you would like to leave with people? Oh, no. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me. And uh, yeah, had a good time. Thank you. Thank you.